Um, okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Thank you um, for joining us in this yoga practice for Father's Day. Uh, I know Dad's pretty excited. We've talked about teaching the class together for ages. Um, so this is this is pretty cool. Almost four years, just over four years later after we did our training together. So um, for practice, you will need a couple of pillows for the second half of this. So um, if you have thicker pillows, those are great, but you can always just stack a bunch. So I'd say have maybe three pillows if possible. Three is usually a good number. Um, then you're pretty much set up. So you can just put those off to the side. Um, so I'll just give you a couple moments in case anyone has to go grab those. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Um, so for those of you who haven't met me, I'm Lauren, I'm Norm's daughter. And uh, for those of you who haven't met my dad, he'll be taking us off into the yang portion of this practice. So a yin yang, we're gonna start off a little bit more energized, um, get into some standing postures, and then the second half uh, will be really relaxing. So kind of giving you some balance for your day. Okay, so I just invite you to start your practice however is most comfortable. So whether that's in a seated position, um, you're welcome to start laying down on your back. Um, yeah, just come into a place where you can start to close your eyes and relax. So today's practice, um, obviously kind of inspired just by the journey of life and the journey of being a father. And so I just want to start off with a gratitude portion for um, all of the dads out there or the want to be dads or the fur dads. And just to say a thank you for everything that you are, everything that you do, for being a teacher while you're still learning yourself, for sacrificing your own body and your own time to nurture someone else, for giving your absolute all, even if you are feeling far from full, for being open and vulnerable, allowing comfort to come upon another, for listening and following your own natural instincts and teaching us to do the same. And for the strength that you show us and the unconditional love that you give. You are all sorts of magic. Thank you for joining us in this practice. I will let my dad take you off to guide you through the next 30 minutes. And then I will see you all shortly. Okay, thank you, Lauren. Um, we're just going to stay uh, in a seated position for a while. So just make sure that if you're on your back, um, gradually work your way up to the seated position. And you may also notice that, as I find my computer screen isn't quite set up right for some reason, um, if you are uncomfortable in a seated position, you can sit on a block. And sometimes that might feel better or the cushion that you may have gone and got. Uh, so just to start in a seated position, you can be cross-legged or whatever is comfortable. You can let your arms rest onto your lap. Maybe bring your chin down to your chest for a moment. <clears throat> just breathing in and out of the nose. And then lifting your chin, bring your right hand beside you, set the left hand up to the air, bring your right ear towards your right shoulder, and draw the left hand overhead as you reach towards the right side. But pressing into the ground firmly with your right hand. And try not to shrug your shoulders, bring your shoulders up to your ear. And then come back to center, we'll go to the other side, bring the left hand down to the floor beside you, Right hand to the sky, bring your left ear over to the left shoulder, and then draw the right hand over towards the left side, getting a nice stretch through the rib cage on the right side. 
coming back to center. Um, we're just gonna go to a seated twist. So bringing your left hand outside your right thigh, you bring your right hand behind your right hip, and then draw your shoulder, your chin towards your right shoulder as you look up over the right shoulder. Still working with a nice smooth breath in through the nose and out through the nose. And then come back to the center and we'll go to the other side. So right hand outside the left thigh, left hand behind the left hip, bring your chin towards your left shoulder as you look out over the left shoulder. Stay for another breath. And then come back to center and we're gonna extend the legs out in front of us. Now, if, uh, folding forward is an uncomfortable position for you, got through the blocks and or a pillow or cushion might be better to sit on and changes the angle of the pelvis and allows some people to, to lean further forward. Other people, it won't make any difference. So just from the seated position with your legs out in front of you, inhale your hands to the sky and then folding from the waist, exhale forward, fold. Um, we're going to make this active to start with, so just reach in as far as you can, whether it's your ankles, your big toe, the outside of your feet, and try and keep your back as straight as possible for a couple of breaths. If it's too much on your hamstrings, you can bend your knees. Just stay in for a couple more breaths. And then release whatever you're holding, let the hands fall to the floor, let your head fall forward. And then slowly rolling yourself all the way back up. We're gonna make our way to the tabletop position. So hands are underneath the shoulders, knees are underneath the hips, back, back is flat, pressing into the palms of the hand, we're going to inhale, dropping your belly, lifting your heart, looking up to the top of the room. On the exhale, draw chin to chest, round your upper back, draw belly button to spine. Inhale, dropping your belly, looking up. Exhale, rounding the back, pushing that space between the shoulder blades towards the sky. We're going to do this cat cow breath a couple more times. Inhale, dropping the belly, lifting your heart. Exhale. Rounding the upper back. Inhale one more time, looking up. And exhale, looking down. Come back to a flat back, a straight spine. Rounding into the right hand, extend the left foot behind you, turning the toes, pressing into the ball of the foot. Extend the, um, oops, I'm doing it the other way here. Yeah. Now extend the left hand, no, I'm doing it the other way. <laughs> I did it backwards. Extending your right hand straight out in front of you. You can stay here if you want, or you can float the left leg off the ground. Stay for a breath, and then crunch your elbow to knee. Inhale, coming up. Crunch elbow to knee. Inhale up, crunch elbow to knee, and hold it for three, two, one. Inhale up, bend your left knee, reach around with your right hand for your foot, and see if you can lift it a little bit higher. Stay for a breath. And then release the foot, let the left knee and the right hand float down to the ground and we'll go to the other side. So this time we're gonna extend the left to right foot, but you're turning the toes under, pressing into the ball of the foot, extending the left hand forward. And then your option is to float the right leg off the ground. And then we're gonna draw a knee to elbow. Inhale up, bring the knee to the elbow. Inhale up, one more time, crunching knee to elbow. Stay for three, two, one. Inhale back up, bend the knee, reach around with your left hand for your foot, and see if you can bring that a little bit higher. And then allowing that knee to float down to the ground, let your hand float down to the ground. We're going to keep our hips stacked over top of our knees and we're going to go to puppy dog. So walk your hands forward, 
until you can come down, bring your forearms down to the ground. If that's a long way, you can always use a bolster or cushion to bring your arms onto. But we want to end up being able to rest our forehead on the mat or on a prop. prop. Hips are stacked over top of the knees. And stay here for two or three more breaths. And then slowly start to walk your hands back underneath your shoulders. Take your knees wide, toes together, heels slightly apart, lower your hips into that open space between the heels, and then lower the upper body down to the floor, finding child's pose. And child's pose is a resting posture. It's a place you can go to if you need to take a break during the class. Right now, we're just, we're just allowing the body to release a bit. Stay for one more breath. And then pull yourself up to tabletop. Oh, you can switch, switch the other direction if you want. So coming back up to tabletop, turn your toes under, pressing into the balls of the feet, pressing into your hands, hover your knees off the ground, engaging the core, and then lift your hips up to the sky as you straighten your legs. This is downward dog. Your hands, your fingers are spread wide, maybe pointing towards the front corner of the mat. It's like you're pressing into the floor with your hands as you're trying to press the front of the mat away from you, sending your hips a little higher. You're on the balls of the feet. Maybe your heels are working their way to the ground. They never have to touch. Stay in for another breath. And then walk your feet up to your hands. Inhale your hands to the sky and bring them through heart center and down beside you. <laughs> We've got half a body there. <laughs> Inhale your hands to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, maybe bringing your hands onto your shin, your back flat, and then bring your hands back down to the floor. Step back to a high plank, and then drop your knees down to the ground. You can point your toes, and we're gonna lower to the ground, try and keep our elbows tight to our rib cage. So floating down all the way to the ground. We're going to do a baby cobra. So we're going to just press into our hands to slightly lift our chest off the floor. Top of the feet are pressing into the floor. Maybe your thighs and knees engage and lift slightly. You can even float your hands off the ground using just your low back muscles to keep your upper body lifted. Stay for another breath. And then plant your hands underneath your shoulders. Press yourself back to tabletop. Turn your toes under, pressing through the balls of the feet, lift the hips, finding downward dog. And then walk your feet up to your hands. Inhale, hands to the sky, through heart center, and to mountain. Inhale your hands up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Again, if this bothers your hamstrings, bend your knees. Inhale, halfway lift. Plant your hands, step back to high plank. And again, we're going to drop to our knees. So just lower gently to the floor. Hands underneath the shoulders. We're going to lower the upper body all the way down. Elbows tight to the rib cage. You can do exactly the same thing you did the last time. Or you can keep your hands pressing into the floor, maybe lifting the upper body a little higher. Pelvic bone is still pressing into the ground. Stay for another breath. Pressing through the hands, come back to tabletop. Turn your toes under, pressing in the balls of the feet, lift the hips. And what you can either walk or jump your feet up to your hands. Inhale, hands to the sky, through heart center, and then finding mountain. We're just gonna stay here for a couple of breaths. Hands, palms be facing forward, drop your chin to your chest, soften or close your eyes, and just check into whatever you're feeling right now. Maybe notice what your breath is like. Maybe noticing if you feel like you're in a very windy place and you're shifting side to side, just noticing any sensations that arise. We're gonna do one more flow, vinyasa flow. 
Uh, you can do the same things, one of the twos we've already done. We're gonna go to the full flow this time. Inhale your hands to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. Plant your hands, step back to high plank. So option to drop the knees for anybody that wants to do it. Otherwise, we're gonna float down to elbow height. And you can do cobra, or baby cobra, or you can go to up dog. So it's just top of the feet and hands underneath the shoulders are touching the ground, looking up towards the top of the room. And then turn your toes under, finding downward dog. And again, you can walk or float your feet up to your hands. Inhale, hands to the sky, through heart center, and finding mountain again, dropping your chin, softening and closing your eyes, palms facing forward. Again, just checking into whatever you're feeling. Blinking your eyes open. Send your hands up to the sky. Bring your feet together so toes are touching, heels maybe slightly apart. And then bend your knees, drop your hips, finding chair pose. Hands are reaching up on about a 45 degree angle towards the top of the room. Shift your weight into your heels, maybe even float your toes off the ground and then bring them down one at a time, or maybe they're a team and they all come down together. Stay here for a breath, maybe looking up between the hands. And then bring the hands to heart center, and we're gonna take the right or the left arm and place the forearm onto the right thigh. So I'll just turn here so you can see. Take your right hand onto your sacrum, and we're gonna twist to the right side now, if this, um, if you can do more, if you can take your left elbow past your right thigh, you can bend the left elbow, you can bring the palms together for a prayer twist. Just make sure one knee doesn't pop out in front of the other one. Stay here for a breath. And then come back to center, forward fold. Take your feet about hip distance apart and just let your upper body hang loose. You can let the arms swing side to side. You can bring hands into opposite elbow creases. You can let the arms swing side to side or front or back. You can let your head hang loose. Just totally letting the whole body go. Stay for another breath. And then release the hands down to the floor. Inhale your hands to the sky, through heart center, and bring the hands beside you. And we'll do the other side, so bring the toes back together. If this is, in a comfort, is not a comfortable place to stand, you can take a wider stance, maybe, maybe hip distance apart. And then bending the knees, dropping the hips, sending the hands up to the sky, finding chair pose. Stay here for another breath. Check that the weights in the heels, lead you float those toes again and then bring them down separately or together. Bring the hands to heart center. We're gonna take the right forearm onto the left thigh this time, the left hand onto the sacrum, and then try to rotate open on the left side, maybe gaze going looking over the left shoulder. If you can take that elbow past the knee or past the thigh, you can bend the right elbow. Bring the left hand beneath the right for prayer twist on this side. In here for another breath and then come back to the center forward fold again take your hips um, about uh, shoulder hip distance your feet about hip distance apart and just let your body dangle again you can bring the hands and opposite the elbow creases or if you prefer take your first two fingers hook them around the inside of the big toe the thumbs to the outside and then pull up on the big toes at the same time as you're pressing down so the toes are really aren't going anywhere. And if you want, you can bend the elbows, wing them out to the side as you draw the upper body a little closer towards the thighs. So just staying here for another breath. And if you want to change this, you can shift the weight into the heel to release your toes and slide your hands, palms face up underneath the feet Maybe the toes reach the wrist traces. Shift your weight into the balls of the feet for two breaths. Or you can just be still dangling whatever seems to work for your body. Shifting the weight into the heels. Bring the hands out from underneath the feet. Inhale, hands to the sky. 
through heart center and back beside you. Inhale your hands up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, hands pressing into the shin. Plant your hands, step back to high plank. Lift your hips for downward dog. And then take your right foot in the air and step the right foot through between the hands. Drop your back knee, so we're in a lunge. Bring your hands onto that front thigh. We're pressing down and forward into the thigh. And you can lift your heart, you can look up to the top of the room. And you could stay here if you want. If you want to make this a little more challenging, you can turn the back toes under, press into the balls of the foot, lift the back knee. If you still want to make it more challenging, you can take one hand to the sky, you can take both hands to the sky. And if you want a little bit more, take your gaze up between the fingers. Stay here for a breath. Bring the hands back through heart center, back down to the ground. Step back to downward dog. So we're lifting our hips again, pressing through the hands and the balls of the feet. You can stay here, or if you want to do another flow, I'll just lead you through it, shifting forward to high plank. Option to drop the knees or keep the knees lifted and do a full chaturanga. Coming down to elbow height or to the ground. Coming to maybe cobra, cobra, or maybe going to up dog. Back to downward dog. Float your feet up to your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Plant your hands, step back with your right foot. Drop your right knee. Bring your hands onto your front thigh. So now we're on the other side. We're pressing down and forward into the left thigh. Option to stay here. If you want more, turn your back toes under. Press into the balls of the right foot. You could stay here. You could take your right hand to the sky. You could take both hands to the sky. You could take your gaze up between your fingers. Stay for another breath. Bring the hands down to the floor, framing your front foot. Step up with your back foot. To meet your front foot, inhale, hands to the sky, through heart center, and down beside you for mountain pose. Bring your hands onto your hips, ground into the left foot. Step back with the right foot. Drop to your knee and curl the toes. We're going to walk the right or the left foot out to the side a little bit. And here, I'll change my angle for you. So we're walking the left foot out to the side a little bit. Ground the right hand underneath the right shoulder. Bring the left hand to the inside of the left thigh. And you can stay here if you want. If you want to um, pivot the upper torso and look out over the left shoulder, you can. You can keep the sole of the foot on the ground, or you can press into the leg and roll to the outside of the foot if that feels comfortable. So we're just finding a twisted dragon here. Stay for one more breath. And then you can stay for a couple more breaths if you want, or you could bring your foot back in a little bit, bring your hands back to center. You could come down to your forearms for gecko. If that's not available, you could use a block or a bolster to bring your forearms onto. So lots of different options, just finding what feels good to your body. Stay for one more breath. And then if you're down in gecko, press your hands, straighten your arms, turn your back toes under, lift the knees, step up to meet your front foot, inhale, hands to the sky, and back down beside you. Being at the top of your mat, we're going to hands on the hips, step back with the left foot, drop to your knee. Now we're, we're in the lunge on that front leg. You can um, bring your hands down to the floor, walk the right foot out to the side a little bit. Make sure the toes and knees are pointed in the same direction. Left hands underneath the left shoulder, right hands to the inside of the right thigh, and pressing into the thigh, rotate towards the right side. Gaze can be out over the right shoulder. You can keep the right foot flat, or you can roll to the outside of the foot if that's comfortable for you. And you can stay here for a couple more breaths if you want to go to get home. Foot can stay wide, or you can walk it in a little bit. You can come down to your forearms. 
you can keep your hands planted on the ground if the arms straight. You can use a prop, a bolster, a cushion underneath the forearms. Again, just finding what feels good to your body. Bring your hands back underneath your shoulders. You can walk your feet, foot back between your hands. Turn your back toes under, lift the knee, step up to meet your front foot, and inhale the hands to the sky, through heart center, and down beside you. Starting at the top of the mat, hands can go to your hips, ground into the right foot. Step back with the left foot. So we're making a big step back, and we're going to adjust the back foot so it's almost parallel, the outside of the foot's almost parallel to the short side of the mat. Toes may be pointed slightly forward. We're bent, we've got a nice bend into that front knee, so the knees should be over the ankle. My front heel should be intersecting the arch or the heel of the back foot. My body square to the long side of my mat. And then send your hands out in opposite directions. So the, the right hand is going forward over top of my right knee. My left hand is going out the back. You're squeezing your shoulder blades together so they're flat against your back. Gaze can be past the middle finger on the front hand. And stay here for a couple of breaths. And then flip your palm and let that front hand float up and over. And I'm just going to come down to my knee to try to show it because I know it's not on the screen. Back hand is floating down the back of the leg. Stay in for a breath. Coming back to warrior two. I'm just going to adjust this. Coming back to warrior two. This time we're going to straighten the front leg, flip your palms to face the long side of the mat. Take your front hand as far forward as it can go before you allow it to drop towards the floor, maybe the back of the hand pressing into the side of the calf, resting on the shin, maybe reaching for a block or the floor. And your left arm is going towards the sky. Maybe your gaze can go up towards your left thumb. This is warrior two. You can stay here for another breath. Or sorry, this is triangle. <laughs> and now we're going back to warrior two. We're gonna do one more pose. Return to the lunge in the front leg, so bending into the knee, drop your front forearm onto your front thigh. Back hand comes down, around and up. So we've got a nice straight line from my hand, down my arm, down the outside of my body to my back leg. You can stay here for a couple of breaths or if you want to take your hand off the thigh, hold an imaginary beach ball, you could do that too. Stay in for another breath. And then bring your forearm back to your thigh. Come back to warrior two. Bring your hands onto your hips. Turn your right toes to face the side of the mat. Turn your left toes to face the back of the mat. So we're just gonna reverse to the other direction. Return to warrior two, front heel now. The left foot is intersecting the archer heel of the back foot. My knees tracking over the middle toes of my left foot. Arms are extended in opposite directions, shoulder height. Palms are facing down. My gaze can be past the middle fingers on the front hand. And we can stay here in warrior two for a couple of breaths. And then flip your front palm, lift that hand up and over. Back hand can float down the back leg. Gaze can come up to your top thumb if you want. Peaceful warrior. Coming back to warrior two. Straighten the front leg, flip your palms to face the side, the long side of the mat. Take the front hand as far forward as it can go before you allow it to drop towards the floor. Again, maybe back of the hand pressing into the side of the calf, pressing on the shin, or reaching for a block for the floor. Right hand going towards the sky. Stay for another breath. And then coming back up to warrior two, return to the lunge in the front leg, knees bent at 90 degrees. Bring your left forearm onto your left thigh, back hand comes down around and up. Stay here for a breath. Option to bring the left arm off the thigh, hold an imaginary beach ball. Bring the forearm back down to the ground, return to warrior two. 
Bring your hands onto your hips. Turn the left toes to face the side of the mat, your, front toe, your right toes to the front, and then step up to meet your front foot. So we'll do one more quick little pose here before we let Lauren go to work. So just grounding into the left foot, bend the right knee, and then bring it up to the front, bring the knee out to the side, and we're gonna find tree pose. So tree pose could be simply toes on the ground, heel above the ankle, maybe the sole of the foot is gonna be on the inside of the calf, maybe on the inside of the thigh, just make sure it's not pressing into the side of the knee, we don't need to do uh, any damage on the knee ligaments. And then if you feel comfortable, if you've got your balance, hands can come to heart center. If you wanna take it further, you could bring your hands up to the sky. So stay here for three breaths. Bring the hands back to heart center, back to your hips. Bring the knee forward, release the foot down to the ground. You can walk it out a bit if you need to. And then ground it into the right foot. Lift the left knee up to 90 degrees, bring it out to the side. Find your variation of tree pose. Again, toes could be on the ground, heel above the ankle. Maybe sole the foot on the inside of the calf, maybe on the inside of the thigh. Once you feel you have your balance, hands can come to heart center. If you want to create any kind of shape you want, you're creating branches, going to reverse namaste. Just finding what works good for your body. Staying for two more breaths. And then bringing the hands back up to center, wherever they were bringing heart center. Release your foot, just walk it out. And I'll turn the proceedings over to Lauren. So you can probably make your way back down to your mat. Make sure your bolsters are close. And thank you for joining me for the first half of today's class. All right, so welcome to the second half of your practice. Um, we're going to actually get started on our bellies and you'll need a pillow for this pose and pillows just going to come underneath your head. So once you've landed yourself onto your belly, you'll just come up onto your forearms. You have a little bit of lift of the chest and then take your left arm and slide it underneath your body. So your left cheek and your left shoulder are to the ground. And then take your right knee and slide your right knee up so that it's maybe about a 90 degree bend. If this doesn't feel good for your right knee, grab another one of those pillows and take it underneath your knee. And you're essentially in a sleeping frog pose. So this should be a comfortable place for you to land, especially after a little bit of that spicy practice of norms this morning. Beautiful. You guys all look really relaxed. So the intention of this part of the practice is to just slow down. You already put in the work. You have heated up the body, and so now you have this opportunity to cool down. This is the second half of your journey. And know that it is okay to switch gears halfway. It's okay to let go of what happened before this and just simply drop into this moment. And one of our best tools for that is to just simply find your breath and become aware of this gentle rhythm of ebbing and flowing. Notice how your rib cage expands belly presses in towards the ground as you inhale. And as you exhale, your body sinks heavier, almost collapses and towards the earth. Inhale breath, there's an opening and a lightness. 
and exhale a heavy lift. I'm aware of these opposite feelings and sensations within your body. You might even for the first time today notice the sound of your breath. Notice the length, especially if your breath got short in those last few poses that were challenging. Allow yourself the depth to breathe. Fully, smoothly, completely. The yin practice that we're stepping into is one of longer holds more gentle postures. So at any point, it's just too deep. Out of the knee, you can always unthread your arms, cradle your head, underneath your pillow. But the idea isn't to get anywhere, but to be impressive for this journey. Let go of any thoughts or thoughts or not float along the waves of your breath like a boat on the gentle rolling waves of the ocean. Breath in and breath out. Breath in and breath out. Breath in and breath out. Notice how you've already traveled so far from the start of this pose until now. Without anything big happening. You have already shifted. You keep the intention of relaxation, of slowness, and move the Slowly start to slide your right toes down to meet your left so that your legs begin to feel together. And then use your right hand or forearm to press into the ground. Lift yourself enough you can unwind your left arm. Then come back onto your belly and you can have your hands underneath your head or cheek. Bend your knees, pick your heels up towards the ceiling and just gently wash your feet to the left and to the right. You might notice a release into your low back and sacrum. Allow this movement to be nourishing, letting sensation from that first pose fade away. And gently, the next time your feet come through the center, release toes back and down, the tops of your feet to your mat. Lift up again to your forearms just for a moment of transition. Slide your right arm underneath your chest, pumping up. Right cheek to your pillow. And you can always add more support if you need it. And then left knee bend to do a square shape out to the side of your mat. Take notice of what your body wants to do here. Your body will potentially have your heel fall in or fall out. Your knee might need to slide further down or up. So this is the resting pose. So where your body wants to go, just allow it to go. If you need less sensation, roll more to your right hip. 
if you need more sensation, roll more weight to your left. Close down your eyes if they've opened up and have started that cycle of thought. Start to come back into this journey of your breath. When we start any journey in our life, the path is always unknown. So whether this is the first time you come to your yoga mat, or perhaps it's a hundred, this journey is new, is uncertain, and has the capacity for so much beauty if we allow it. Let go of expectations of your body. Let go of perfection. Shift if you need to shift. Take breaks when you need them. Just following this journey breath by breath. I think it's fairly consensual that stepping into a role of parent is a journey that nobody is ever prepared for. And mistakes will be made along the way. And there will be mountains to climb and valleys to bring ourselves out of. And to know that even in those moments, you were unsure where things were not working out. There was always room for you. Take three more breaths on the side. Let your body make heavier and heavier. Slowly glide your left toes down to meet your right. Bring your legs together. Unwind your arms, pressing enough into your left hand. You can lift and release down. Definitely start to rock your hips side to side, feeling your right hip bone and your left roll into the mat. Really, really gentle, slow movement. And then come all the way back to stillness. Bring your chin to the ground, hands plant under your shoulders, press yourself away from the earth to come back to tabletop. Hands stack under your shoulders, hips over top of your knees, and then let go of what is right or wrong and just move. Hips can go side to side, hips can sit back, forwards. It might feel nice to take little half circles of your head, right ear to right shoulder, chin draw down through center and left ear to left shoulder. We'll take about a minute of movement and if this is new to you there might be resistance of I don't know what to do or I'm uncertain. Close your eyes and just start to move. Sometimes we just need to step into momentum to gain it. And so as you move more and more, you'll unstick your body and perhaps even feel more comfortable being in this space of uncertainty. Allow this movement to be nourishing. It doesn't have to look like anything or follow a pattern, just move. 
when you're ready, we'll meet back into child's pose. So you can walk your big toes together to touch. Knees can come by, or you can keep knees together. So two choices, knees together, knees by. Get your hips back to your heels. Hands can walk forward. And then always optional if you want to take a pillow underneath your chin, your cheek, your chest. If you came into this pose and you're feeling a lot of tension in your knees, grab a pillow or two, lift your hips away from your heels to take that pillow behind your knees, and then you can sit back so that that angle of your knees isn't so deep. You have that extra support. And allow your spine to round and curl. That you don't have to be long and stretched out, that it's okay to just be heavy. Child's pose invites us just to come back to this nurturing of self. To find this safety within, home within. You can always shift or move if this is feeling a little sticky and find a new place to land. But try to just stay present with your breath. You might even notice your thoughts. You might notice some distractions around you. And as you become aware of those, just simply let them go. To create more space for the next breath, the next moment. Let go of knowing time or planning ahead. and see if you can find the joy in this ordinary moment. Maybe joy in breath, joy in the person next to you or the people who have joined you on this call. Maybe just joy in movement and stillness. to make our way to our back. So from tabletop, shift your feet to either side and make your way onto your hip. 
and then bring yourself onto your seat. So you will need your pillows for this next pose. I usually use two, sometimes three. You'll place your pillow about where you think your shoulders are gonna land on your mat. Eric's better than a window. <laughs> okay, so to so lower down, you're just gonna, you can use your hands or hold your hamstrings. You can attempt to lower yourself so that your shoulder blades land on those pillows. Your head is supported. So if your head is too cranked back, take another pillow for the back of your head. Distorted fish pose. The idea is to prop your chest up higher than your shoulders. Like your shoulders melt towards the sides of your pillows. And then arms come out wide. That can be a T-shape, a cactus, a diamond. You can always find sun tanning dad interlacing your hands to the back of your head, elbows wide. So check in with your physical body once you've landed in this pose. If there's any tension you might need to shift, if you're feeling this in the low back, move your blocks or your pillows higher. So typically if the low back is sore, the pillows are too low. So you want them quite high. Now feet can stay planted. This might be the most stable place to land. You can always extend your leg out long, like you're coming into Shavasana, toes like out to the side. Or you can butterfly the legs, hold the feet together, knees like Lots of options. The wider you need your arms, the more expands you're going to spread across your chest. And make sure your palms face up so that you're open to energetic way to receive you. And you're also externally rotating the shoulders without really giving you. Everyone's heavy settled into position. Before we fully land, there's a little bit of arms wide. Start to press the back of your right hand into the ground. Like you're reaching for something towards the right. And then gently turn your gaze to the left. Shift drops towards your left shoulder. You can just as the right side of your left hand. Deep breaths. Your left shoulder. Reach for your right hand. On your next inhale breath, release and soften into your right arm and bring your chin back to your center. Find the other side, start to lengthen your left arm out like you're reaching for something to the left side of your mat and then take your chin to your right shoulder. And you'll feel a sensation down the left side of your neck, maybe down your left arm. Let your head hang heavy, one more breath. And then inhale, bring your chin back up through center and soften into both arms and just stay in this open place. If you enjoyed that movement of taking your chin side to side, you're welcome to move for a few more breaths, reaching through your arms and dropping your chin over. But you can also just settle into this open Close down. Relax into the back of your head and neck. And start to feel your breath again. Inhale, your heart rises up. And exhale, drop your shoulder blades heavy. Inhale, your heart expands open. And exhale to sink. As we move through, 
these journeys of parenthood, these journeys of navigating the ebbs and flow of life, the best thing we can do is stay open in the heart center. Is stay open to the loss. Stay open to the change. Stay open to the joy. Joy isn't found in extraordinary moments. It's in these ordinary ones. That with loss comes space for new beginnings. With sadness or grief comes our ability to feel, to release. There is so much joy in all these ranges of emotions and experiences if we just let it. So even if there's some discomfort or uncertainty here, I offer you space to just find joy in the next few breaths, maybe gratitude in someone or something within your life. And to just keep your heart open, even in those moments, it feel easier to close off. If your knees are splayed out to the side, you can just gently pick your knees up with your hands, bring them through center. If your legs are extended long, bend your knees and plant your feet. Start to gather your hands closer into your body and then roll yourself off of your pillows over to your right hand side in fetal position. So head can cradle your cradle in your arm left side body stacks over your weight. We're moving on to our back, but you may need to press those pillows out of the way. So you can press into your left hand and just slide your pillows off to the side and then come back onto your spine. Last couple of poses, plant your feet onto your mat, laying on your back. Pick up your right knee and draw your right knee into your chest. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh and flex your right foot so that you have your toes pointed up towards the ceiling. Okay, you're welcome to pause here if this feels okay. Or you can start to float your left foot off your mat, drawing your left knee in towards your body and then thread your arms to clasp behind your left hamstring. So right hand between that gap of your legs, left hand outside of your left thigh, and then hands can interlace on the back of your leg or the top of your shin. I really love movement in this pose. So whether your foot is planted down or is lifted, you're always welcome to shift a little bit more to the left or the right, almost like you're rocking. Should feel a sensation into your right hip. Maybe a little bit of compression into your left. We're not staying here for long, just using this pose to prep us for our twist. If you have a hold of your leg and your feet are lifted, you're welcome to squeeze in just a little bit tighter for this last breath. And then you can gently release, those of you with your foot lifted, left foot to the ground, keep your legs crossed in this figure four. So right ankle over left thigh. Slowly start to lower your knees to the left and your right foot will plant on the ground so that your right knee points up to the ceiling. 
Now, if your foot doesn't quite meet the ground, you can grab your pillows and stack them underneath your foot. If you want to bind, your left hand can wrap for your right foot or your right ankle. Now, if this just feels like you're in a pretzel shape and there's pulling on the knees or hips that's not serving you, simply come back through center, untangle your legs so your inner thighs glue together, and then drop your knees over to the left. So you'll still be in a twist, but your legs will be stacked rather than crossed. Check in with your right shoulder. It may want to lift here, so just root it back down. Let your upper body rest heavy. I always like to think of twists as the unwinding of our back. Just as we wring out saturated cloths when we're doing the dishes, this is an opportunity to unwind saturated minds or bodies. If there have been worries or thoughts that you've been revisiting time and time again, use this moment to just bring that out. As we compress into our abdomen, there's less space for us to be here. And so you get to choose what you want to drop along the way, what you want to release and let go. So that when we unravel from this twist, there's room for that next one. Take three more breaths on this side. And try to soften into each exhale. On your next inhale, slowly lift your knees up through center and you can untangle your legs, plant both feet, heel toe your feet wide to the edges of your mat, and then just drop your knees to the left and to the right like windshield wipers. You're welcome to keep this movement going for as long as you need to release any tension. And then when you're ready, you can walk your feet back hip width distance and set up for the other side. Left knee draws in towards your chest. Cross your left ankle over your right thigh. So your left knee slays out to the side. Flex into your left foot. So there's a bit of activity in that leg. You're welcome to stay here and you can always shift left and right if that feels nice. Or you can float your right foot off of the mat. Left hand will thread between your legs, like thread going through a needle. Right hand to the outside of your thigh, and then hands interlace behind your right leg or on top of your right shin. Know that this doesn't have to look any certain way. As long as you're receiving a subtle opening in your left hip and it feels nourishing, you're exactly where you need to be. There's no depth you need to go to just simply allowing yourself to relax. Creating space for this next step of the journey to come into twist in about five or so breaths.
Now, if you still have a hold of your right leg and right foot is lifted, gently float your right foot down onto the mat. Lower your knees towards the right. So this time your left foot is going to plant on the ground. Both shoulders stay rooted. If on this side, this variation of figure four isn't available, come back through center and untangle your legs and just drop both knees over to the right. Optional to add in props underneath your foot or your knees. Props being your pillows that really just wedge the spaces between our body and the earth. towards the end of this practice and it really is an opportunity for a new beginning. Each journey is that opportunity to start over at any step along the way. You pull off to the side of the road and pause, let go of extra baggage that don't need for this next step off of the mountain. Maybe pick up some souvenirs along the way. And so whatever your journey looks like today, know that you can always reset. Even if there's been chaos around you or the hasn't been as meeting your expectations that you thought. You're welcome to just simply start over rather than anything. To say I'm sorry, to say thank you. To just give yourself a chance. Listen for the sounds of your breath. And on your next inhale, you can start to unwind back up through center, lifting away from the earth. Untangle your legs and take any final movements that feel good. Whether that's another pose, just shifting side to side. It might feel nice to hug your knees in and give yourself a giant squeeze. Maybe extend the legs. And we're moving to Shavasana, which is like a skinny starfish shape. Hands down beside you, palms face up, legs extended and toes turned out. If you feel any low back pain or tightness with legs extended, you can always bend your knees and just plant your feet. Wherever you land, just come to a comfortable place. Thank you for joining me for the yin portion. I'm going to bring this back to Norm to close off the practice with you. Hmm. There we go. You should be able to hear me now, I think. Um, so anybody who's ever been to my yoga classes knows I always read a little passage from a book by Melody Beatty called A Journey to the Heart. So I'll keep with that same tradition. And just do a little reading here while you're enjoying your Shavasana. You're right where you need to be on your path 
guided, in just the right place for you today. Many times in my journey, I stopped short, convinced I could never find the place I was trying to find, only to discover that it was right in front of me all the time. I had gone there instinctively, gone right where I needed to go, right where I was heading. There is a part of us that knows where we need to be and understands where we really want to go. There is a place in us that has a map, even if our eyes and conscious mind can't see it, can't figure it out, or aren't certain it's there. If you're spinning in circles, feeling lost and confused, trying to figure out where you need to be, and not all that certain where you're going, stop, breathe deeply, look around. You're right where you need to be. Maybe you've been there all along. So it's interesting, I, my favorite teacher, yoga teacher other than Lauren, um, has been reading passages from this book ever since I started doing her classes seven or eight years ago. And the first Christmas after um, uh, your, Lauren and I did our yoga teacher training together in Costa Rica, she gave me this book as a Christmas present without even knowing that I've been hearing stories from it for years. Um, the, the teacher that, that has been reading these, these passages to me uh, is Katie Jolicker. Um, she's with the Be Free Foundation in Spruce Grove, and they teach a lot of free yoga classes for people struggling with mental health. So if you enjoyed today's classes and you are able to um, contribute to a wealthy cause, we put the link in the invitation to the thing on the Facebook page. So just being aware if that's something you're interested in. Otherwise, I hope everyone has a great Father's Day. Thank you for joining us and have a great day. Namaste. Thank you. If you're relaxed and laying down, you're welcome to just stay for a few moments. There's no rush to get up. Um, so much gratitude to get to share this practice with you, Dad, and with your yogis that have followed you, and with family and friends from all over the world, friends I haven't seen in ages. Jamie, so wonderful. Um, friends here in Calgary. So thank you for joining. We'll stay on if you guys want to chat or anything. Thanks, Maddie. Um, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you very much, Norm. Oh, you're we welcome. really enjoyed. <laughs>